All right, Happy New Year, YouTube. Tacoma Comics coming at you today. And I got a mega haul from, I guess, from uh, all the Christmas and uh, New Year and holiday break that I've had. Being a teacher, I had a nice two weeks off, which was kind of cool. Collected a lot of books, mainly uh, half price in a local shop that had a great sale last weekend. And uh, I think I'm going to break this haul into two videos, my first two-parter, just because there's too many books for one video. Nobody wants to sit through more than uh, 20 or 30 minutes of me doing this. So let's start right off. Went to Half Price Bookstore when they had a 20% off sale the uh, couple days after Christmas, I think the Friday after Christmas. First picked up Uncanny X-Men 132. It's a really cool issue. Uh, one of the ones I remember um, a little bit before I started collecting X-Men, but I went back and gotten this one originally, then lost it, got it again just now. It's got white pages, a little bit of a spine roll, but it was like 25 bucks, and I got the 20% off, so I was really happy with that. Great classic Hellfire Club versus X-Men battle. Um, really kind of cool early Claremont X-Men. Just just love that comic. Really nice. Moving along, got the Marvels. I've always wanted to read the Marvels. I like the stuff Kurt Busiek does. Uh, if you don't know the story of the Marvels, it's a really cool, uh, just a four-issue um, miniseries that he did with Alex Ross. Uh, it's all about like superheroes from the point of view of kind of family life, community life, what is their non-superhero life like, non-fighting life like, uh, stuff that he really replicated when he made his own um, universe in Astro City and went on with Alex Ross to create that whole series. Really good stuff. This was uh, book four. Really excited to have that. I'm just knocking my lights all over the place. A-Force number one, just picked it up because it was cheap. This is uh, Willow Wilson's second run on A-Force, I believe. She did an earlier one uh, with Marguerite Bennett a year before this in 2015. We came out with this one. I like the cover. I like G. Willow Wilson. Wanted to pick it up. It was cheap, so I got it. There we go. Uh, Quake. Again, not a super Quake fan, but I uh, am a super Matt Rosenberg fan. I love some of the stuff he's done. We Can Never Go Home, Four Kids Walking in the Bank, and Secret Warriors, which includes Quake. So I figured I'd pick up an issue one there. Uh, Black Magic. Love Greg Rucka. Love the stuff he's doing with Lazarus. Um, Black Magic number one. It was two bucks. And <laughs> Black Magic number one. It was two bucks plus the 20% off. So I picked up two copies of that. Like this Batman cover. Not a big uh, Batman fanatic or anything. But I am now kind of loving the Tom King stuff, but I've never historically been into Batman. Thought this is kind of a cool uh, little retro Poison Ivy cover with Batman there, so I picked that one up. Forget how much that was, pretty cheap. Fable Six. This was uh, the first um, Mark Buckingham on art, or at least this established Mark Buckingham as the series artist. This one, I believe. So I figured I'd grab that one since I found it cheap. They had a little three pack of Usagi Yojimbo, uh, recent ones, 155, 156, and 157. And I managed to pick those up for like $3 plus the 20% off. 156 is 157. And then the same thing with uh, a series I've never actually looked at or read before. I mean, I knew all about it. Uh, I believe it's Eric Larson's Savage Dragon is one of the first image books. He was one of the image founders. It's the only book he writes and it's going on, I don't know, what is it, uh, 280 issues now or something crazy like that. So they had a six pack including the uh, the first six issues of Savage Dragon, uh, First Prince, and I got those, you know, like four or five dollars or something. So looks like a fun read. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles right there. And the second issue, so you know that's going to be fun. Um, obviously, you can see a lot of the, the 90s influence. I don't know if he influenced the 90s or if they influenced him, but, you know, if you look at that woman down there in the bottom left, nothing says a 90s comic than an outfit like that. Uh, so, you know, you definitely get that. But it looks like a really good, fun read. He looks like a really cool character, unique. Um, I don't know many dragon cops running around these days, so but that was pretty cool. And then I just picked up another uh, Amazing Spider-Man here uh, with Miss Marvel. I think I've already got a copy of this, but I wanted to get another one because I like Miss Marvel and like some of her collecting her earlier appearances. So went for that. A few more that I got half price that day. I got uh, the Volume Four, Number One. That's only like worth a couple bucks. I didn't get it for money or investment. Just got it to get it. And I got a couple other issues. I'm trying to go for my. Uh, 
third complete set of uh, Volume 3. That was the first volume that uh, G. Willow Wilson worked on. So I picked up a few more issues to help round out my third uh, go-through on that run. And then got a little eBay purchase here. Got myself some uh, Miss Marvel. This is Volume 3, number one. It's called the McKelvey uh, Costume Design Variant, or Costume Variant, and it's uh, kind of cool. Just, you know, how to draw Miss Marvel, what her costume looks like. And this is before she was really established. And I love this part down here, right? That bracelet, if you look right below it, let's see if I can lower this. A secret compartment. And I have yet to see that being used in the comic. I know that there was a couple issues where she got, like, her um, grandma's favorite bracelets and wore them. And they're part of her outfit. But uh, I don't know that there's a secret compartment yet. So this was, I mean, these next four comics cost me $3 altogether, plus uh, shipping, which is like five or six. I don't know if you can see, there's a little dirt mark there. There's a couple spine ticks. This is not like a collector copy so much as it's just I wanted to have it because I want to have everything from that uh, volume three run. So I got that, got a little third printing of number two. Number two went up to six printings. Number one went up to eight printings. Uh, and then I just got two more, <laughs> number five, which is one of my favorite covers. And finally, I think I got number four. So there you go. Some more Miss Marvel. Okay, moving on. Hit a local comic book shop on the way home from uh, work today. This is one not right in Tacoma, but uh, near on the way back from uh, where I work. So found Marvel's Book Zero, which is not part of the original four-issue run that I was talking about that I'm loving so much, but... This is just kind of like one of those, wow, let's milk this for all it's worth. And they actually say that right in the front cover. This book is just to suck your money out and make you get something for nothing. But uh, it's got some amazing stuff in it. It was only like 50 cent pickup or something. So I just wanted to show you some of this Alex Ross goodness. x woman there. I mean, you know, he's a great artist. Everybody loves his covers. This is going back to 1994, and look at the stuff he did back then. Just amazing. Get a little bit more. Uh, next page. You got Namor. And The Thing, Ben Grimm. Show you one more, man. Victor Von Doom and Tony Stark. You know, just some really amazing art. Classic characters, classic Marvel artist, uh, just classic comic book artist. Really love this stuff, so I thought that was a great pickup, man. Just really like to look at that book. Uh, Missing the Nom 43, that was a 25 cent comic. Bam. Powers, collecting these when I can. 25 cents, I'll pick it up. Casanova, kind of collecting these when I can, because like Matt Fraction, Fabio, uh, Fabio Moon. Don't love the, the series. Um, there's like five series of Casanova. Um, I like them, just don't love them, so I get them when I find them on the cheap. This, however, I was kind of psyched to find. I mean, this is not like a, a book that's commanding huge money or anything, but if you're into Miss Marvel, you think she's going to be appearing in a movie someday soon, uh, this is the first animated appearance of Miss Marvel, and I actually got this on eBay a couple months ago. I had that in one of my early haul videos. I was really excited to have it. I uh, hadn't seen it in the wild at all, and this shop had three copies, uh, so, and they're all at cover price, so I bought one, two of them, left one for somebody else to go find. So that's uh, Comics The Gathering in, in Puyallup, Spanaway area, if anybody local is listening. They had X-Men 214, I believe that sticker says three bucks, it was three bucks. Uh, one of the ones that I was missing, I got 11, 12, and 13, I'll show you those in my next whole video. So I got 14, getting close to the whole run. And then they had Marvel's, uh, what is this, book three, which was actually the last one I needed. So I was really excited to get that. I'm going to go read that one because I've only read one and two so far. Uh, so that was a nice little haul I got. <laughs> and then finally today I was at a half price bookstore in between other comic book shops and orthopedic surgeon appointments and eye doctor appointments. Stopped off at half price bookstore. Speaking of Kurt Busiek and uh, Alex Ross, I found uh, Dark City, uh, Astro City Dark Ages. This is book one, number four. I had one, two, and three, so I got them all now. Got to get that price sticker off, but for 25 cents, I figure it's worth it. And I've got 267. So with this book now, Uncanny X-Men 267, I have 
every Uncanny X-Men from 145 through Claremont's last one, which is 278, with the exception of three biggies, and those are on my wish list this year. 221, first Mr. Sinister, 244, first Jubilee, and 266, first Gambit. I think those are all correct. You can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but uh, I'm going to definitely pick those three up this year and uh, get the, that run settled. Look, this is a great comic, and they're a buck each, number four and number three. I figure I'll pick, pick up a few extras because I really like what... Uh, Ed Brubaker is doing there with Kill or Be Killed. Really fascinating comic. If you're not reading that one, uh, get on it. Get on it fast. The final part of this video, something I'm super stoked about. If you don't know Matt Rosenberg, goes by Ashcan Press on Twitter. Get on it, man. The, the writing he does is amazing. The indie work he does with uh, Four Kids Walking to Bank and We Can Never Go Home is amazing. And uh, I haven't read Phoenix Resurrection yet, but the stuff he's doing with Secret Warriors is amazing. I loved his Kingpin run, um, especially the, the limited series. Really great, great stuff. So he was on Twitter, um, oh, I don't know, just before uh, Christmas. And he said, hey, anybody can't afford any comics for their friends, want to get a friend a present, send me your address and I'll, uh, and I'll, I'll hook you up. So I figured I'd get a comic or two. He sent me four kids walk into a bank. It's signed on the second page, I think. Signed right there, MR17. I figured, awesome, I'm going to give that to the uh, counselor at, at school. He's a big comic book fan, my only uh, only guy I work with who, who's a comic book fan besides me. He sent me We Can Never Go Home, uh, issue four. I've got this in trade paperback, signed by him from Emerald City Comic Con last year, but I don't have... Uh, any of the comics from this. So I was really psyched to get that and keep that one myself. Uh, this is a free comic book day double from Black Mask, I guess. We Can Never Go Home and Young Terrorist. He only wrote We Can Never Go Home, but he signed it. So, so awesome. And then he also hooked me up with uh, Rocket from Al Ewing, uh, 2015, I think. Number one variant cover. Going to bring this one into the council's office, stuff that we don't read. We just leave laying around for the kids to read. You get some kid who's upset about something. He comes into uh, the council's office. Sometimes they can calm down or cool down by reading comics. So I just thought that was awesome. Absolutely stoked that he did that. He's a stand-up guy. Really amazing. So Matt Rosenberg, everybody, hit him up. He's, he's really awesome.